Here are the video solutions for Pearson Functional Skills Maths. This is the sample assessment material for first teaching September 2019 and this is level 2 section A which is the non-calculator section. So let's just take a look at question number one. So Rhea works in a paint shop. Um, she needs to make 1500 mil of purple paint and she makes purple paint by mixing red, blue and white in the ratio of 3 to 2 to 1. Now before I even read the question I'm just going to write red to blue to white so that is in a ratio of 3 to 2 to 1. So how much blue paint does Rhea need to make 1500 mil of purple paint? So what we need to do here is work out what fraction is blue. So in order to do this, we're going to add these numbers up. 3 plus 2 plus 1 is 6. So therefore, 2 sixths is going to be blue, 3 sixths is red, and 1 sixth is white. Anyway, we're only really interested in the blue, which is 2 sixths. So we want to work out 2 sixths of 1500 millilitres. Now, what we can do here, just to make life a little bit easier, is simplify this fraction. 2 sixths of 1500 is 1 third. Of 1500 so what is one third of 1500 well that is 1500 divided by 3 well 15 divided by 3 is 5 so 1500 divided by 3 is 500 so therefore the answer is 500 milliliters if you are using the fraction 2 sixths then what you would need to do is divide uh, 1500 by 6 and then multiply the answer by 2 so how many sixes go into 1500 well 1 divided by 6 is 0, move the 1 across, 15 divided by 6 is 2 with a remainder of 3, 30 divided by 6 is 5, 0 divided by 6 is 0, um, so now we need to multiply that answer by 2 and 250 times by 2 is 500, so either way we still of course get the same, get the same answer. Let's take a look at question number 2, so here is some information about the number of holes, houses sold by 20 salespeople. So we notice, hopefully, where we notice that the uh, the numbers in the frequency column add up to 20. Um, but if you didn't know that, then we you can just go ahead and add up the frequency column and you'll find you do get the answer 20. 7 plus 6 is 13, 14, 15, 15 plus 5 is 20. Now what we need to do here is because seven salespeople sold somewhere between one house and five houses, well, what we're going to do is just assume that all of them sold whatever the value is that's exactly halfway between 1 and 5. And the halfway point of 1 and 5 is 3. Um, and if you're another way, if, if you want to double check that you've definitely got that right, um, is add 5 plus 1, which is 6, and then divide 6 by 2, which is 3. 10 plus 6 is 16. 16 divided by 2 is 8. 11 plus 15 is 26, 26 divided by 2 is 13, 16 plus 20 is 36, 36 divided by 2 is 18, or if you just know that 18 is halfway between 16 and 20, then that saves those unnecessary calculations. So what we've got here is um, we know that seven people sold an estimated three houses. So the total number of houses sold by these seven people is seven times three, which is 21. So what we're going to be doing now is multiplying these columns. 6 eighths are 48. 5 times 13, we might need to work out. 3 fives are 15, carry 1. 1 times 5 is 5, plus 1 is 6, 65. 2 eighteens are 36. So we need to work out the total or the estimated total number of houses. So we need to add these uh, figures together. 1 plus 8 is 9. 9 plus 5 is 14, plus 6 is 20. 0, carry the 2. Um, I'm just looking for some nice numbers that will add to 10. For example, 6 plus 4 is 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. So an estimated total of 170 houses are sold by 20 people. So the estimated mean is going to be the estimated total divided by the number of people. So 170 divided by 20. Now 170 divided by 20 is exactly the same as 17 divided by 2. We've just simplified the division there um, and now we can put 17 in a bus stop um, although I'm not really sure this is going to help massively but uh, 1 divided by 2 is 0. Move the 1 across. 17 divided by 2 which was the original question which is why I thought that maybe doing the bus stop doesn't solve many problems. 
uh, but let's just stick with it. 17 divided by 2 is 8 with a remainder of 1. Now this is where the bus stop will be useful because normally this remainder of 1 we would attach to the next digit along but we've run out of digits inside the bus stop so what I need to do is put in a decimal point and a 0. I'll put a decimal point above the bus stop as well. Now we had that remainder of 1 and now that can sit on the 0 to make a 10. 10 divided by 2 is 5 so that is our estimated mean number of houses it is 8.5 question number three Amanda wants to buy a new mobile phone and she sees two offers offer A and offer B and she says that she will save more than 300 if she goes with offer B so let's work out offer A first of all and we're using estimation so we're rounding the numbers obviously because we can't use a calculator here so it's a two-year contract so two years is 24 months so it's going to be 24 months multiplied by um, 60 and what is 24 times 60 well let's work out what 24 times by 6 is first of all 4 6 is a 24 carry the 2 2 6 is a 12 13 14 so 24 times 60 is going to be 1 4 4 0 um, the mobile phone itself costs we'll call that 40 pounds so the total is going to be 1440 plus 40 which is 1480 pounds so that is offer a okay offer b is a monthly cost of 11 pounds and again we're looking for um two years so that is going to be 24 multiplied by well we could multiply by 11 I, I mean I don't think 11 is that horrible a number but let's just call 11 10 that's even easier because 24 times 10 is 240 pounds but this mobile phone is obviously a lot better than the phone you get in offer a well I guess we'll never find out but uh, we'll, it's 889 pounds 92 let's just call that 900 pounds so we need to add 240 pounds and the cost of the phone itself which we've estimated is 900 and what is 900 plus 240 well it's acceptable of course to use a column method for the adding here if we want 0 plus 0 is 0 0 plus 4 is 4 9 plus 2 is 11 so 11,000 sorry 1,140 is for offer B so will she save more than 300 pounds well what is um, 1140 plus 300 that comes to 1440 which is still a lot lower than um, the 1480 so yes she will save more than 300 pounds if she goes with um, offer B okay let's take a look at question number four so Matt buys a new fish tank the fish tank is in the shape of a cuboid and the diagram shows the water levels so it's 30 by 100 by 30. Matt knows that 1,000 cubic centimetres is 1 litre. A gallon is 4.5 litres. And he can keep two small fish in the tank for every gallon of water in the tank. Matt thinks he can keep more than 36 small fish in the tank. OK, so what we need to do is work out the volume of the tank in gallons. So first of all, what is the volume in cubic centimeters so the volume is going to be the three dimensions multiplied together so it's 30 multiplied by 100 multiplied by 30 30 times 100 is just 30 with two zeros on the end so that's going to be multiplied by 30 now all I would do is multiply 3 by 3 which is 9 and then put back those 1 2 3 4 zeros so 90,000 and because these are centimeters this is now cubic centimeters now we know that 1,000 cubic centimetres is 1 litre, or 1 litre is a cubic centimetre, so if we're converting litres into cubic centimetres, we're multiplying by 1,000. So if we're going in the other direction, we are dividing by 1,000. So if I divide this by 1,000, I've got the uh, volume in litres, and 90,000 divided by 1,000, we just chop off the three zeros, so that is 90 litres. Okay, so what I need to do now is to convert my uh, litres into gallons. Now, I know that one gallon is 4.5 litres. 
and we've got 90 litres. Now, uh, what we want to do is work out well, how many times greater than 4.5 is 90. Now, this might seem quite tricky, but hopefully you, especially if you're a football fan perhaps, you know that 45 minutes is half of 90 minutes. So to go from 45 to 90, you're multiplying by two. So if you're going from 4.5 to 90, you're multiplying by 20. 4.5 times by 10 is 45, and 45 times two is 90, so 10 times two is 20. Hopefully that made sense. So if we are increasing the right-hand side of this um, equation by 20, then we know that we need to multiply the left-hand side by 20. In fact, maybe I'm making things more complicated than they need to be. If one gallon is 4.5, then liters then 90 liters which is 20 times more than 4.5 is going to be 20 times more gallons and 20 multiplied by 1 is 20 gallons okay so we know that the capacity of the tank is 20 gallons and he can keep two small fish for every gallon so if he can keep two fish per gallon then if he has 20 gallons then he can keep 20 times by 2 which is 40 fish so Matt thinks he can keep more than 36 small fish in the tank. Well, actually he can keep 40 fish. So yes, Matt is correct. Here are the video solutions for Pearson Edexcel Functional Skills Maths. Level two, this is section B, the calculator section. And this was the sample assessment material for the first teaching of September 2019. So let's take a look at question number one. So write a statement to compare the median values of the two sets of data. Data set A has got a median of 3.1. What is the median of data set B? So what we need to do here is, uh, first of all, put these values in ascending order. So minus 38, that's the lowest value. Then minus 13. Then minus 9, minus 2. Then 14, and then 28. So for the median, I'm going to cross one off the left and the right and I'm going to do the same again until I've got one in the middle but unfortunately I can't get one in the middle I've got two in the middle so the median is halfway between negative nine and negative two now this question is a bit tricky because we're dealing with negative numbers so what's halfway between minus nine and minus two well I would say well what is halfway between nine and two halfway between nine and two is nine plus two divided by two which is 11 divided by 2 which is 5.5 so if halfway between 9 and 2 is 5.5 then halfway between minus 9 and minus 2 is going to be minus 5.5 so what we can say here is that the median for set a is greater than the median for set b Okay, so we want to check um, our answer for the median of data set B. Well, we worked out that um, 11 divided by 2 was 5.5. So therefore, minus 11 divided by, minus, uh, divided by 2 was minus 5.5. So therefore, if I multiply minus 5.5 by 2, hopefully I get the answer minus 11 or minus 5.5 times 2 is minus 11, so that shows us that this answer is indeed correct. Okay, so for this question, all we need to do is um, add together the figures for this gap here is gonna be minus two plus two, or two minus two, which is zero. Uh, this hole here is gonna be five minus one, which is four. This is minus six plus two. Um, so if you need to, write out your number line um, so 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, etc. Minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4, minus 5, minus 6. So we know that if we're adding, we're going in this direction. And if we're subtracting, we're going in this direction. So here we're starting at minus 6 and we're adding 2. So that is minus 4. Um, so if you're struggling with negative numbers, do a number line. Minus 6 minus 3 is minus 9. We're making it even more negative. Um, 5 minus 3 is 2, 3 minus 3 is 0, 4 plus 3 is 7, 4 plus 5 is 9, 4 minus 6 is minus 2, minus 5 minus 2 is minus 7, minus 5 minus 4 is minus 9, 
1 plus 6 is 7, minus 2 plus 6, or 6 minus 2 is 4, and 6 plus 5 is 11. So we've got the table complete there. So part B says, what is the probability that the total score is minus 11? So first of all, how many scores are possible? Uh, or how many uh, outcomes are there? Well, there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I mean, you could count all of these numbers, but we've got 6 by 6, so that is out of 36. How many times can we get negative 11? Well, there's only 1 minus 11, which is, but if you get a minus 6 and a minus 5, so that is a probability of 1, uh, 1 36. Uh, part C says, what is the probability that the new total score is zero? So we know there's 36 in total. How many zeros are there? Well, it's just on this diagonal. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So that is six out of 36. Both of these numbers are in the six times table. So we can simplify the fraction. Six divided by six is one. 36 divided by six is six. So the probability is one sixth. Moving on to question number three. So last year, Zach had two jobs. He worked in an office for 12 months and earned 2,600 per month. So his total would have been 12 times by 2,600, which comes to 31,200. And at the gym, 39 weekends or 80 pounds per weekend. So that's 39 multiplied by 80, and that comes to 3,120. So in total, he would have earned 31,200 plus 3,120, which comes to um, a total of 34,320. So what fraction of his total income came from his work at the gym? Well, that is 3,120 out of 34,320. Um, so that is the answer as a fraction, but we can definitely break this down. First of all, we can chop off the zero, so that's 312 over 3432. Um, these fractions are pretty horrible to simplify, but as long as they're even numbers, we can continue to divide by two. So dividing top and bottom by two, we get 156 over 1716. Top and bottom can still be divided by two, so that's 78 over 858. Again, both even, we can divide by two. That's 39 over 429. We've got odd numbers, so we can't divide by two. Let's try three. And both are divisible by three, so we get 13 over 143. Now, 13 is a prime number, so this is the fraction in its simplest form unless 143 is in the 13 times table. Can 143 be divided by 13? Yes, it can. So this can be simplified by dividing top and bottom by 13. 13 divided by 13 is 1, and 143 divided by 13 is 11. So the answer is 1 11. Moving on to question number four. We've been told the scale is one to three. So what we need to be doing here is uh, dividing all of these by three. So 15 divided by three, that is going to be five centimeters. 18 divided by three is six. Um, we're only interested in the front elevation, so the depth we're not bothered about. Uh, but this height here is the same as this height here and 4.5 divided by 3 that is 1.5 and 10.5 divided by 1.5 that is 3.5 okay so all you need to do is I'm going to start at the bottom corner here so it's going to be 5 up so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 ideally use a ruler 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 uh, we're going up 1.5 so 1, 1.5 to that point there. Uh, we're going 3.5 across, so 1, 2, 3.5, and now all we need to do is just join these two up with a straight line, and we have now done our scale drawing. Okay, let's have a look at question number five. So for me, the key thing to begin with is um, we want um, a total length between 15 kilometers and 20 kilometers, but everything's in miles. So what is this in miles? So I know that one kilometer is 0 0.6 miles. So therefore 15 kilometers is going to be uh, 15 multiplied by 0 0.6 and 20 kilometers is going to be 20 multiplied by 0 0.6. 15 times 0 0.6 is nine miles. 
and 20 times 0 0.6 is 12 miles. So I'm looking for a route that is between 9 and 12 miles and it has to go through C at least once. Or, I mean, that means it can go through just once. So I'm just going to look at this sort of, um, well, let's go um, to E to F, a quarter, to A is another quarter, so that is half a mile so far. Then if I go to C, five and a half plus one half is six. So, so far I've got six miles, quarter a quarter is a half, plus five and a half, that takes me to six miles. So I need at least another um, three miles. Two plus one gives me the three, and I've got another three quarters and a one quarter. Three quarters plus a quarter is one. So in total, that is going to be um, three miles plus one mile, so four miles. So six plus another four, that is 10 miles. Perfect, that is between nine and 12. So therefore the route that I'm following, let me just make a note of that, that is going to be the entrance to F, to A, to C, to D, and then back to the entrance again, and we are sorted. Okay, let's take a look at question number six. So what is the surface area of a cube that's got a side length of 2.5? Well, first of all, a cube has six identical sides, front and back, left-hand side, right-hand side, top and bottom. So it's gonna be six multiplied by the area of a square with a side length 2.5. So that's six times 2.5 times by 2.5. And six times 2.5 squared is 37.5. So that is our final answer, 37.5 square centimeters. Okay, Megan is the manager of a computer shop. She organizes a sale with 18% off. And she's changed the price from 389 to 330 98. Has she changed it correctly? Well, if it's 18% off, that means you are now paying 100 takeaway 18%. So you are paying 82% of the original price. So what is 80, sorry, what is 82% of 389 pounds? Our calculation is 0 0.82 multiplied by 389. And that comes to a total of um, 318 pounds and 98 pence. So has she changed the price correctly? No, she has not. Use estimation to show a check of your answer. So we were working out 82% um, of 389. So what we could do here is just do call 0 0.82, call it 0 0.8 and call 389 pounds. Let's call that uh, 400 and 0 0.8 multiplied by 400 comes to 320 and that is pretty close to our answer of 318 pounds and 98 pence okay so this uh, fairly tricky question here the first thing we can see is that the, the team are going to use the average time to fully load an old lorry so we need to work well what is the average time so we have these times here so one two three four five six seven times so what we need to do is add them up and then divide by seven so um, 52 plus 60 plus 55 plus 59 plus 54 plus 63 plus 56 that comes to a total of 399 minutes 399 divided by 7 is 57 minutes so it's going to take 57 minutes for uh, and that is for how many fridges it's for uh, for 24 fridges So what we need to do now is work out, well, how many fridges can they get in to this um, container? So we know that they're not putting fridges on top of each other, um, plus we don't even know the height um, of the container anyway. So the one fridge is 1,000 by 800. So how many 800s go into 2,400? Well, 2,400 2, divided by 800 is three so we can get three fridges um, along the width of this container and how many 1000s will go into 13,600 so 13,600 divided by 1000 is 13.6 
well we can't put in 0.6 of the fridge so we'll just have to put in 13 and there'll be a bit of a space so we've got 13 fridges along the side and three across the width so in total the number of fridges we have is 3 times 13 which is 30, 39 fridges so this is where the tricky part comes in but we're just going to use a little bit of logic we know that 24 fridges I'll just put F for fridges equals 57 minutes and we want to work out well how long is it going to take for 39 fridges now if it was 48 fridges well that'd be easy peasy 48 is double 24 so we just double this number but working out how many times greater 39 is than 24 is quite hard so what we need to do is work out how long it's going to take to load one fridge well if 24 fridges take 57 minutes then one fridge will be 57 minutes divided by 24 and that is 2.375 minutes so therefore 39 fridges will be the time it takes for one fridge which is 2.375 multiplied by 39 and that comes to a total of 92.625 minutes they think it will take less than 90 minutes to fully load the lorry well it's going to take 92.6 minutes so are they correct no they are not so the final answer after all that is just no okay let's take a look at question number nine so Louisa uh, sorry Louis is put, uh, putting a ribbon around um, the cake so she's putting around the circumference now the formula for the circumference is pi d so pi times by the diameter so if we take pi to be 3.14 and multiply that by the diameter which is 14 we are going to get 43.96 uh, but we also want a 6 inch overlap so if we add 43.96 and that 6 we get 49.96 so if Louis has a piece of ribbon that's 48 inches in length is the piece of ribbon long enough the answer is again no right let's move on to question number 10 so for the first question we need to add in this extra athlete he's 36 years old now age is across the bottom so we need to locate 36 which is this line here basically it's 2 to the left of the 40 and it's time 29 minutes so 25 26 27 28 29 so 1 below 30 so 1 below 30 and 36 so 30 32 34 36 so that is that point there done okay so we've plotted that extra information on the scatter diagram and now we need to draw a line of best fits now um, this is a lot easier if you use um, a, um, a ruler I'm just doing this sort of freestyle so it might not go particularly well but I'm, what I'm trying to do is draw a straight line that cuts through the middle of all these uh, data points I'm trying to keep as many of the points as close to this line as possible so the, li the line of best fit will look something like that okay describe the relationship shown in this scatter diagram well as the line of best fit is going upwards um, we can therefore say that the correlation is positive and because the dots are pretty close to the line in general we can say that there is a strong positive correlation so strong positive correlation okay question number 11 George will cover part of the floor with tiles and um, it's in the shape of a triangle um, so I think the most sensible starting point would be to work out the area of the triangle but as we're buying tiles in square meters I would turn these centimeters um, these centimeter distances into meters so divide by 100 so that is um, 3.05 meters and that is 3.715 meters just divide these by 100 because there are 100 centimeters in a meter now this is a triangle so the total area is going to be 3.05 multiplied by 3.715 divided by 2 so the area of this um, triangle shape is 5.66 square meters now um, I wouldn't there, there are a few other digits I could have written down but I know that I need to buy packs of one square meter now I can't buy a pack or two-thirds of a pack so I'm gonna to have to round that up to six packs for six square meters and I'm just gonna to have to 
except that there's going to be a few tiles wasted. So I'm going to buy six packs of tiles. So that's six lots of £39.95 and six times £39.95 comes to a total of £239.70. But I'm going to, uh, George is getting one third off. So if he, if he gets one third off, then that means he pays two thirds of £239.70p. So here we're calculating a fraction of an amount. So what we need to do is take our total, divide it by the number on the bottom, and then multiply it by the number on the top. And 23970 divided by 3 multiplied by 2 comes to a total of £159.70. And 80 pence. So question number 12. We need to work out that the deposit um, that Gabby will have to pay. Now the deposit is the difference between the cost and the mortgage. Now the cost of the flat is 175000 But what is the mortgage? Now the mortgage is 4.625A or which means 4.625 multiplied by A where A is the annual income, which is 34,000. So what is 4.625 times 34,000? Well, that comes to a total of 157,250. So therefore the deposit is the difference between the cost and the mortgage. So the final answer is 175,000 minus 157,250. And that comes to a total of 17,750 so this is the deposit amount part B Gabby invests £4,000 for three years earning 2% compound interest per annum per year so this interest rate is going to be applied three times so 4,000 is going to be increased by 2% so our multiplier for a 2% increase is 1.02 if you're not sure how to get to this percentage multiplier, it's 2 divided by 100, which is 0 0.02. So this is the multiplier you would use if you're calculating 2% of an amount. But if you want to increase by 2%, just add 1 to this figure, and that's where that 1.02 comes from. Now, we need to do this three times because this interest rate is going to be applied at the end of each year. So 4,000 times 1.02 times 1.02 times by 1.02 or alternatively you can type it in as 4,000 times 1.02 cubed and that comes to a total of £4,244.8.832 and obviously we need to round to the nearest penny so that is a much more sensible answer, £4,244.83.